allowed to always use initial for before. So momentum before is equal to momentum after a collision. There could be there could never be a collision with just one object. So there's always two objects involved in the collision. We're never going to use three. Yeah, we won't. I just have to think about that for a second. But no, we don't. So now what you need to remember, if there, even if there were five objects, then you're going to say the a momentum of object A plus, please, I don't know why people throw minuses in here. The final is on the other side. If you want to bring it here, then it's final minus initial, but it's still going to end up being plus. So the momentum of object A plus the momentum of object B. So everything that's moving for the, before the collision, you add up their momentums. And that must be equal to the momentum of object A after the collision. So this is the initial momentum of object A, initial momentum of object B. I'm stressing this a lot and I know it's easy, but you'll see sometimes things just go wrong. Plus the momentum of object B, final. So these are always going to be equal. Doesn't matter what collision happens. No, always going to be equal. Hmm? What do you mean? No. Because this is a law, remember the we said the law, what who can remember from yesterday? What was the law of conservation of linear momentum? Linear momentum. momentum. In an is constant. constant. Total linear momentum in an, why do we say linear? We only work with this or this at a time. That's also important. You'll see sometimes in the question they try to confuse you. They drop something from the, this height, but then you must remember it doesn't have a velocity in this direction because it's going like this. So you just ignore its velocity so it's as if it was standing still. That type of thing does get thrown into papers. So this is important. How do I calculate momentum? M times V, no deltas, no change in anything. It's just the mass of object A times by the initial velocity of object A. Plus, the mass of object B is equal, uh, times by the velocity of object B. Oh, what did I do wrong? Good. Initial is U. So it's MBUB, because it's the initial velocity of object B, is equal to the same object. Please remember the masses never change. So the mass of object A, and this is where you're going to get confused in the exam. Exam stress makes you put velocity of object A with object B. And I never understand how that happens. If you draw a little diagram for yourself and take object A and write all the information under object A. Take object B, write all the information under object B. It can't be simpler. This, I really think, is the easiest physics question in your matric paper. What? Momentum. This. You know, all you have to do is stick values into an equation. Oh. It's literally all you have to do. So, mass of object A, velocity of object A, but now it's final velocity, and then plus the mass of object. Oh, now I threw that all the way away. Oops. Just there. All right. So, the mass of object A, final velocity of object A, plus, plus, plus the mass of object B, final velocity of object B. Uh, times by, <laughs> okay, yes. multiply, time. yeah, okay. mass times velocity gives you momentum, oh, oh, oh. you don't have to put it times, you can just write them next to each other, all right, so this is our basic equation, so you can always, and that's where we ended yesterday, I said you can always use this equation, but now there's going to be shortcuts in different types of collisions, so we're going to quickly look at the different types of collisions that you can get, and two of them are in your books and the third one is not. But there's space for you to add it, uh, if I remember correctly looking at it yesterday. So if you look at your physics book, this is on page 4-10. Is he right? Yes. Yes. So different collisions is on page 4-10, yes. So what you will see is the first one that we have is just collisions. There are two types of collisions. We spoke about the one yesterday. What did Anati say when she was reading? Okay, so one object is standing still. Here comes another object. Which one has momentum? Only this one. 
So this one has momentum. What's the momentum of this one? Zero. And then they go together afterwards. So then you can combine their masses and they will move at the same velocity because they're moving together. So that's the first scenario. So what you can do then with our equation, this becomes the, the momentum of object A of B. What does it become? Plus zero. And then after, after the collision, what does that become? So you can just simplify it. You can always start with that final with that equation, but you don't have to because now you know the final velocity of them both is going to be the same. So you can just have a b. Because if you now go b, a, b, b, and you think there's two unknowns, it becomes confusing. So it's just the velocity, and then it's going to be the mass of object A. This is in your books, guys, plus the mass of object B. Okay, so that is if they join together. What other types of collisions can you think of? They both? They're both moving before and after. Yes. So they could be both moving before and after. Then we're going to use that equation that we had originally. But what must you remember? What is important in momentum? And we're going to practice that now. What is momentum? A vector or a scalar? A vector. Because remember, mass is a scalar, but velocity is a vector. So what is the only thing that you can get wrong in these equations is if you forget to put a negative where you're supposed to put a negative. And that's what we're going to practice now. So if two things are coming like this, and you decide this one is positive velocity, what is this one going to be? Negative velocity. Negative velocity. Am I right, Chana? Relatively coming towards each other, right? Sorry. <laughs> Relatively coming towards each other. Yeah. So if they're coming towards each other, and this one is positive, what is this one going to be? Negative. Negative. Okay. Actually fine, so it's not yes, now that's what you must remember. Because now, what if they and now they do this? This one that was positive is now, and this one that was negative is now positive. positive. So the signs are super, super important, and that's why you need to draw diagrams for yourself. Even if the question doesn't give a diagram, we normally give you a diagram, but we don't give you both. We give you the diagram before the collision, not after the collision. Let me just clean this. Who was talking about eyesight just now? Because I think mine's also going away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those are the two, um, those are the, you can have, oh no, that's, that's the one that's important I want to get to. So those are the two collisions. So they move off together, they collide and deflect. So we normally give you one of these diagrams. This is nice because they gave you both diagrams. So um, yeah, I'll share this with the notes, this with you as well. That you have it. Okay, so those are two types of collisions that you have. Oh, I lie because I actually spoke about this one, remember? What's happening here? If an object is dropped onto another object, what you need to remember, this object, do we worry about it in the beginning? No, because here comes something, and now this one that was standing still originally is actually still standing still if you're looking at this direction. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. it, it's not moving in this direction. So this one that's falling lands and then move together. So it's literally the same as if it was stationary because its velocity in this direction is zero. zero. And now it's moving together. Okay, so please look out for those ones. They they trick you with they don't trick you, they just put them in and then you must just be careful. Now the other type of Collision, that's not really a collision, that is an explosion, is the one that people miss. Now, if I have two, if I have a bomb here, my hands are, is a bomb, and it explodes, what is the velocity now? Welcome back. What is the velocity? Was it, that, was it so important? Yep. Okay. Is everything okay? <laughs> it is zero. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is zero. If this is my bomb lying there, or landmine, no one has stepped on it yet, it's just chilling there. What's the velocity? Zero. So, what is the momentum? Zero. Please remember that. In an explosion, the initial velocities are zero, it's the calm before the storm. Nothing is happening. And now, when it explodes, it has a velocity. 
Lots of velocity, yes. So there's velocity this way, there's velocity this way, everything is going, but what is the total momentum of all those pieces? Not zero. Must still be zero, because initially it was zero, and the law of conservation of momentum says total momentum says constant. That is why signs are important. If this one is moving with a positive velocity, and then this one has to move with a negative velocity to give me zero. Are you with me? Yeah. Uh, that was a frown. Okay, so if this one moves off with 10 meters per second, and this one moves off with 10 meters per second, what is 10 plus 10? 20, so are you going to get zero? No. So that means if this one is moving off with 10, what must the velocity of this one be to get zero? Minus 10. So you must end up with an answer of zero. So the explosions are not always that clear to see. So if it's for an explosion, two masses like this can't just, so that they will tell you it's a bomb. But often this is the type of one that people miss. When you have springs, guys, I'll share the, the science clinic notes with you. So, because the diagrams are really, it, it's very much summary, so it's nice. Um, if the velocity in the beginning is zero, so that means all of this becomes zero, then this is also going to be zero. Are you hanging us? I'm hanging myself. I was I going to be even in class on Friday? Are the drama kids going to be in class on Friday? You guys are in the costs. You don't know how to answer it. Because Friday is supposed to be our brownie day. No. I'm supposed to give you sugar free brownies on Friday. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> there's sugar in the back. You can pour sugar on it. <laughs> can you please just try it? Don't judge something you don't know. You must always be willing to try new things, guys. Healthy new things. <laughs> I don't have sugar that doesn't have flour. Oh. Yes, now that I now that I think of brownies, I think of <laughs> <laughs> this oven. And this I shouldn't have said that. Oh. And there's almond flour. I make it with almond flour. So it's made with natural. <laughs> Guys, don't judge what you don't know. They say they're sweet. That's not 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 sweet. Oh, <laughs> I just don't like the taste of it, right? I know, I, I get generated like at the speed of light when I eat those things. I've got an obesity gene in my family. If you see the rest of my family, then you'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing, it's a thing. <laughs> Let's not stop talking about me and talk about this question. Oh, I want to show you that very bad picture. <laughs>